Hey y'all, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Ari. I love to talk about all things entrepreneurship, small business. More times than not, I'm covering just like my pop-up experience, different craft fairs, craft markets, whatever you like to call it. I like to say that I'm a mama by day and a small business owner by nap time. So if you guessed it, it is indeed nap time. Without further ado, let's get into it. It is Friday and my next pop-up is on Sunday and it's hosted by the exact same people who hosted my first craft fair that I went to that was holiday themed. So they're gonna do another kind of Christmas holiday themed pop-up and let me show you the flyer real quick. It's so cute. Anyways, um, that's on Sunday and it's Friday. So I've been doing just like a lot of prep and I would say that it is the most prepared that I've been like, I would say ever. So this specific market will have about 20 vendors, which is a lot smaller than the very first Christmas pop-up that they hosted. The one that I went to about two weeks ago had about a hundred vendors and I did extremely well given the circumstances of just having so many vendors. like. I did good. I'm looking forward to see the outcome and the turnout of this specific pop-up. Just to give you like a little bit more insight on the actual location of the pop-up, it's gonna be hosted at a local brewery um, that has like a really nice setup for like indoors and outdoors. I'm gonna be indoors, uh, thank God, because it's probably gonna be cold, um, but they are gonna have some spaces for like vendors to be outside. Yeah, still under like 20 people. And I think that our community is definitely gonna just pour into this event because it's gonna be on, I think October, October 17th or October 18th. I can't, I can't remember, I'll leave the date here, but it's right before Christmas. So anyone who is wanting to shop local, they definitely are gonna be at this event if they still need people to shop for. As far as the vendor fee, I paid $50 for my booth. And it seems like my booth space is gonna be about eight by eight or 10 by 10, which is plenty of space for just me and my booth. My booth display is just like a four foot table and a three foot table. And I kind of put them in like an L position to just like make for the, just like the optimal display whenever I'm indoors. In this specific video, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm not gonna show my process of making just because whenever I watch videos of just like creators or people who are showing their experiences with craft fairs and pop-ups i do not like those segments like i get like 10 seconds in i'm like okay fast forward it so let me know in the comments if you like to see content like that or if you are like me and you can go without it <laughs> so like I said, today I'm just going to show you what I have prepped already since I have a lot already prepped. So um, yeah, the main thing that I'm going to focus on this week is just like my bookmarks and making sure that they are on full display because those are always my bestseller. They're my bestseller at my pop-ups and they're my bestseller online. I do modify just the design a little bit for my in-person pop-ups because I like to bulk make them and it takes a lot longer to bulk make the same design that I have on Etsy. So I'm gonna show you what I have. These Strawberry Daisy bookmarks are my bestseller, like, period. And I made one with pink little pearls and daisies. And then I also made one with white pearls and daisies. Super cute, I love it. It's one of my favorites. Another one of my just like classic designs or my OG designs you could say is just the drippy cloud. And I really like this one and a lot of other people like it as well. So I'm gonna have that there. I've made some new designs as well. I made this kind of like coquette bow one and I love this. I think it's gonna do well. And I actually bought um, some materials from a supplier with like an actual like fabric bow. And I'm probably gonna do a similar design and I might whip out some of those for um, this upcoming pop-up as well. Cause I feel like those will do well, especially since like the coquette like vibe and theme is like trendy right now. I also made this little heart, cute. A little mushroom, mushroom what? A little cloud, look how cute. I have these in earrings too and people love them. And I made a simple daisy with like some, um, like some stones, love that. I made two more designs and they are crosses. So I have a pink cross with white pearls and then I have a white cross with white pearls. Did I say that backwards? 
So a pink cross with white pearls and a white cross with white pearls. So they both have white pearls. I didn't say it wrong. <laughs> I think with there being less vendors there, I might do even better than what I did at the very first Christmas uh, craft fair. I'm gonna take you along with me just to see like some of the behind the scenes of what the pop-up consists of, how the craft fair is set up, um, and just everything in between. So the next time you'll probably see me is on pop-up day. So hey y'all, it is pop-up day. I just made it to the location not long ago and I have just dropped my stuff off right now and I had to repark since we're downtown. <sighs> I'm not completely in love with my space, but we're gonna make it work. The venue is really, really tight. It's a lot smaller than um, I was expecting. And I just don't know what the outcome is gonna be today. I don't know if it really shows up well on camera, but I got a new phone. I got the iPhone 15 and of course I got it in pink. So hopefully my video quality is a lot better and I need to get into how I no longer can use my Square processor like car swiper. That is a story for later. Let's get into this holiday market. Okay, this is my space. I'm right in front of the brewery, not loving those chairs right there. And my booth mate is gonna be right next to me. It's like right, right next to me. So we'll see how this works. Things have kind of slowed down a little bit, so I just stepped to the side. I wanted to pop in to say that it has been a busy, busy morning. Like the first hour, I have been like boom, 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 slammed, which is a great thing. All of my best sellers are like selling like hotcakes, and it it feels good that I think that I'm prepared, but we'll see if I sell out of those best sellers. I think that I might. Um, but I've had some returning customers come and that is just super 
like heartwarming to just like see familiar faces. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to pop in to let you all know what's going on before I have a busy time again. Let's go. flatten it you're gonna find the little dot uh -huh. once you find that dot you're gonna pull that strip out and then unravel your affirmation this is so sweet yeah this one says i am loved and worthy oh my gosh it's true I'm here today strictly because I am determined to stay committed. I said that I wanted to get this recap done, so I am here. It is Monday, my pop-up was yesterday. My baby girl is not asleep, she's out there with my husband. So you might hear some baby, some baby babbling. Anyway, so my pop-up was yesterday on Sunday and today, Today, it is Monday, so it has been a very slow Monday. I have been editing this vlog specifically so I can have it prepared for a Tuesday, which is drop day. So if you're seeing this on Tuesday, just know this is for you. <laughs> Getting into what the day was like yesterday, it was surprisingly really warm. So even if I was outside, it would have been fine. It was a beautiful day. I think it was around, I think it was in the high 50s all day and the wind was not bad at all. So with the sun out and everything, I think it felt like it was around 63 degrees, which isn't bad, especially since it's like mid-December. As I mentioned earlier, the venue space was extremely tight. I don't think they moved any tables around for the vendors. So there was a whole bunch of seating and then the vendors were kind of like lined around the space. Um, so it was a little tight. My specific booth area was right in between the bar and the kitchen and right in front of like where they store the beer. And mm, it wasn't bad, honestly. I was receiving a lot of heavy traffic from the waitresses and the cooks, obviously but they they were some of my biggest customers which was great because once they got a tip 
they had that cash and they saw something that they liked. <laughs> And they're like, uh, I knew I shouldn't work today because I was going to be attracted to all these vendors and I knew that I was going to get something. And I was like, <laughs> buy me out. <laughs> and they did. They bought so much from me and I'm so extremely grateful for them and their service. Um, yeah, if you tipped your waitress that day, they bought from me. And I'm so grateful because they are local and they shop local and everything was just good and full circle. When I got in to set up, it was extremely hot. Like I was sweating and initially I had on my coat, I had on a sweater and I had on a very light turtleneck underneath. I had to go take that turtleneck off from under my sweater because I was literally burning up hot. I was sweating, like literally dripping sweat. And I went to the restroom thinking that I could just like dab my sweat off. They didn't have any paper towels. They didn't have any toilet paper. Because as a vendor, we were there like before they opened up. So no one had like restocked anything. I kind of just like fanned myself with my sticker sheet. And I was just like wiping away the sweat like the best that I could. Um, and I'm not like a heavy, heavy sweater. Like my sweat comes in like little bitty droplets. My husband always makes fun of me because of it, but it honestly worked in my favor because it looked like I was just glowing. And I'm not, I'm not mad at it because I was tired that day, tired. Like I could barely keep my eyes open. Like I can barely keep my eyes open now. It was just a rough night. Like my baby, she is currently in her like one year sleep regression. And um, I got maybe three hours of sleep the night before my pop-up. And today is Monday. So last night I got maybe six hours of sleep. So I am literally running off of caffeine. <laughs> Several of the customers who came in, I overheard them saying that they thought that there were gonna be more vendors. I was thinking that there were gonna be a lot more vendors than what there were. It was just very sparse, it felt like. But honestly, that worked in my favor because it was less vendors, less jewelry makers. So like anything jewelry related, if people were looking for jewelry or they wanted to give bookmarks or anything like that, I was the booth to go to. That being said, there were huge waves, like waves where I would have maybe like seven people at my booth, which is a lot. And people were just kind of like cycling in, trying to scoot over so other people can like see what I had on my table. I had about three of those waves where I would just like get about 50 to $150 worth of sales in the span of 15 minutes. I sold out of a few pairs of my earrings, my butterfly claw clips, and I'll show a picture here if you haven't seen those before. And what else did I sell out of? A few of my bookmarks, I think. Um, and I didn't end up selling out of my, oh, my eye. I think I'm okay. I didn't end up selling out of my best sellers like I thought I would, but because I brought in more bookmarks, it was just like so much variety that people chose. They were like having a really hard time choosing which one that they wanted. So they would buy like multiple. And I ended up doing a deal that said, I think it was buy two, get your third 25% off. So I highly suggest if you are thinking about doing any type of market, whether it be holiday or not, to include different deals to basically just encourage people to buy more for a said discount. Being a vendor, of course, you want to make a profit. So price all your items strategically so you're still making a profit at the end of the day. Another tip for any of my vendors is if you're using any type of POS system, make sure that you turn on your tip option on your POS system because people really, people who want to tip will tip you. And what I say whenever the tip option comes up on my Square machine, which is my phone. Oh, and I need to tell y'all about like the whole swipe system. That's next. Anyways, so what I say whenever someone finishes paying on my phone with like the tap option, I turn my phone to them and I say, there's gonna be a tip option. And then after that, it's gonna ask if you want a receipt. Super simple. You don't have to say anything else. At first I was saying like, it's gonna ask you a question, girl, get to the point. It's gonna be a tip option. And then it's gonna ask if you wanna receive. People are not obligated to tip. 
by no means. And I do not get offended when people don't tip. I understand it. But a lot of people do want to tip. They think certain products are worth more than what vendors are charging for. So I think it is in our favor, <laughs> my baby, it is in our favor to allow that option to people who want to tip and support you and your business further. So a very short story about what happened with me and my card reader is I was using the free square um, POS like system that you plug into your phone. And with that option, it didn't have the tap because you can now tap on your phone. Like you can tap, you can take Apple Pay and tap all on your phone. But I did have it for like anyone who didn't have the chip option and they only could swipe. Or even if they had the, the chip and not tap, they're still, they were still able to swipe. So with not having that, I was scared at first because I got a new phone on Friday. And right before I started to transfer all my stuff at the T-Mobile store on my old phone to my new phone, I remembered, shoot, I got a pop up tomorrow. What am I gonna do about my square reader? So I was super nervous and I was like, it's gonna work out because I know that now the app allows you to pay through your phone or pay using, yeah, like using the app on my phone. So basically all I do is like tap, tap to pay and my phone will like go into like this little galaxy mode. Um, if you have, if you have the Square Processing app, you know what I'm talking about. So anyways, it goes into like this galaxy mode and it says like tap to pay is ready. And whether someone is using like a tap to pay card or their Apple Pay on their phone, like they literally, all they have to do is like tap their card on your phone or they like hover their uh, phone on top of yours and it like goes through. And that is the best thing because I don't have to go out and purchase anything like massive. That being said, since my phone is so new and I didn't want to spend like $100 for a case and a screen protector at the actual store, I didn't have a case or a screen protector on my phone. Like all of that stuff is supposed to arrive on Tuesday. I ordered it off of Amazon. So I was very nervous when people would like physically take my phone and like push if they want a receipt or if they wanted the tip. I was like, be careful with my baby. And nothing happened with my phone, thank God, because mm, that would have hurt, that would have hurt. Okay, if you're still here, I know that you're here because you are like me, you are nosy. <laughs> no, no, no. So full transparency moment. I know whenever I was watching videos like this and just like trying to learn from other people's experiences from vendor markets and craft shows and things like that, no one was really sharing how much they made. And I know like depending on your location, it will vary, but I wanted just like a general kind of like idea of how much I could expect to make. So I did want to share that with you all today. This is not something that I'm doing to like flaunt. This is something that I'm doing for just educational purposes and for those who maybe just want like a goal or just like a middle ground, like somewhere to kind of like sit with like expectations of how much they could potentially make. Please um, keep in mind that the products that I sell may be different than yours you might make more or less than me. So take all of this, maybe with a grain of salt, give or take, you know, just, you know, your business. This is what I made at this specific market. And I would say that it was a fairly good day. Like it was, it was good. Like my sales were good. So my sales goal for the day was $300. And I set that goal very loosely because I didn't know what to expect going into this, um, this craft fair at all. I knew that it was gonna be a holiday market, holiday theme, so a lot of people who were coming out would likely want to spend money, like they're coming here specifically to spend money. I knew that this specific brewery may not have a whole bunch of traffic given that it was a Sunday and it was from 11 to four. To my surprise, people were eating brunch and some drinks were involved, but I didn't have anyone who was like sloppy drunk or anything, which is, you know, good. I don't, I don't like to see people abuse alcohol. So I didn't have any of those like impulsive, like drunk buys, which is completely fine. I'm so glad that I didn't have that. All right, so yeah, 
$300 was my sales goal and my sales goal and I set that very very loosely so if I would have felt under that I would have been fine if I would have went a little bit over that it would have been like whoa yeah I got my goal so let's get right into it on square I collected $501.81 and in cash I collected roughly $176 that makes the total out to be $678 that I made at this specific pop-up. And as you've seen, or as you saw, I did get um, a drink and I got some fries, which I did not expect them to cost as much as they did, including the tip. It was $18.66, which for fries and a drink, Ah, yes, so yeah, excluding that food, I made, let me get my calculator because I'm very bad at math. I got this cute little pink calculator. So $678 minus $18.66 equals $659.34 is what I went home with. To me, that was a very successful day. So, was it worth it? Yes. Would I do it again next year if it is something that is offered? Yes. I wanna say thank you so much for tuning in for this long if you are still here. And if you like this video or thought it was beneficial in any type of way, please go ahead and like it. If you feel up to it, go ahead and subscribe. I have a goal for 2024 to reach 1,000 subscribers and hopefully hit 4,000 watch hours so I can get my channel monetized and it could be an extra source of income for me and my family. All the support is very appreciated. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.